let all our neighbors know that we shall join with them to oppose aggression or subversion anywhere in the Americas. And let every other power know that this hemisphere intends to remain the master of its own house. After World War II, the Soviet Union supported the spread of communism, while the United States tried to stop it. This led to a conflict called the Cold War, in which the two superpowers vied for political and military advantage around the world. When John F. Kennedy became President of the United States in 1961, he launched an aggressive military policy by producing more nuclear weapons and increasing defense spending. Kennedy also pushed programs aimed at turning other countries away from communism. He created the Peace Corps, sending volunteer workers to third world countries to help people there develop technology, education, and health services. Castro is only the beginning of our difficulties. When Kennedy took office, relations between the United States and the Soviet Union were poor, but they were about to get worse. The first crisis, came with the Bay of Pigs invasion on April 16, 1961. That day, a group of Cuban exiles invaded Cuba, where communist Fidel Castro was in power. The attack failed, but it soon became known that the American government had supported the exiles. That angered Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. Tensions continued to grow when, in August 1961, the Soviets began building the Berlin Wall, which separated communist East Berlin and democratic West Berlin. After the Bay of Pigs, Khrushchev increased Soviet support to Cuba. In return, Cuba permitted the Soviets to put armed ballistic missiles on Cuban soil, just 90 miles from the American coast. Late in 1962, American U-2 spy planes took photographs of the Soviet nuclear missile installations in Cuba. We now know that the Soviet Union has decided to transform Cuba into a base for communist aggression, into a base for putting all of the Americas under the nuclear gun. Kennedy knew that a standoff with the Soviet Union could have a disastrous ending. He also knew that quick, decisive actions would show Khrushchev that the United States was strong. On October 22, 1962, Kennedy addressed the nation. Good evening, my fellow citizens. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. To halt this offensive buildup, a strict quarantine on all offensive military equipment under shipment to Cuba is being initiated. All ships of any kind bound for Cuba, from whatever nation or port, where they're found to contain cargoes of offensive weapons, be turned back. I call upon Chairman Khrushchev to haul and eliminate this clandestine, reckless, and provocative threat to world peace and to stable relations between our two nations. A blockade carried out by the U.S. Navy was put into action. People around the world waited as American ships patrolled the seas for approaching Soviet vessels. As the Soviet ships neared the blockade, it was one of the tensest periods of the Cold War. But what the public did not know was that Khrushchev had secretly sent four Soviet submarines armed with nuclear torpedoes toward Cuba. The submarine captains had orders to defend themselves against any aggression. If attacked, they had permission to retaliate with nuclear weapons. Our submarine was armed with 22 torpedoes, one of which was a nuclear torpedo. 
As far as I'm concerned, having received an order to use my nuclear torpedo, I would surely have aimed it at an aircraft carrier, and there were plenty of them there in the area. However, the blockade appeared to work. Kennedy and Khrushchev negotiated and came to an agreement. On October 28, 1962, Khrushchev announced the removal of the missiles from Cuba, and the Soviet surface ships turned around and headed back to Russia. Premier Khrushchev has sent a message to President Kennedy today. The Soviet government has ordered the dismantling of weapons in Cuba, as well as their crating and return to the Soviet Union. People around the world were relieved, thinking that nuclear war had been averted. But unknown to the public, the Soviet nuclear submarines were still off the coast of Cuba. The threat of nuclear war still remained if the subs were attacked, and if their captains responded with a nuclear strike. The Soviet captains ran into trouble when their engines started overheating. The submarines had been built and tested in the frigid waters of the Arctic Ocean. The warm seas near Cuba were too much for the subs to handle. To protect their crews, the captains would have to surface every few hours without getting caught. One night while on patrol, the destroyer USS Blandy detected one of the Soviet submarines below the surface and fired three warning depth charges. Luckily, the sub captain did not retaliate and instead tried to stay submerged. Neither side wanted to fire in fear of starting a nuclear war. American ships stayed near the Soviet submarines until the subs were forced to surface. Realizing they were overwhelmed by the American ships and unwilling to start a war, the four submarines followed American ships into open water and headed home. Nuclear disaster was averted for the second time in less than a month. Tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union continued until the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. But the Cuban Missile Crisis was one of the most nerve-wracking events of the Cold War.